Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Witch Talk. The, I am Audrey and um, I am a crone and this is my cup. Um, since I am a funny little story, it's like, so for people who don't know, I'm a pumpkin spice person. I'm a basic white bitch when it comes to fall, leggings, Uggs, the whole thing. I might be dressed completely in black while I'm sporting the whole, and with my little witch hat, as you see back there. Um, but that's my spew. That's, that's me. That's what I enjoy. Um, but funny story. So I have pumpkin spice everything, just to let y'all know. My best friend pointed out to me today, she goes, you've been drinking pumpkin spice since June. Um, and the funny thing is that, um, a couple of weeks ago, I found when we went to Total Wine, which is kind of like a an alcohol Walmart down here, like literally as big as a Walmart, but shelf to shelf just alcohol. It's amazing, <laughs> and I came across um, pumpkin spice liqueur. So I have pumpkin spice liqueur, my pumpkin spice coffee, and my pumpkin spice creamer. So that's how I started my day since I don't really have a lot of errands to run. I don't really have a lot of anything to do today. I decided to go ahead and just spiss myself up and drink, have a little something something with my coffee. But just for you guys to know, I wanted to make sure you guys enjoyed your Maybon before I actually really got into what the festival is um, and how it goes. And that'll drop today. I want to film it and drop it today for you guys. Um, uh, it's just, I got caught up in my own Mabon cele celebrations and that's something that I'm going to try to get better at is doing the holiday s sequences before the holiday. So, um, I'll work on that. As you know that I'm not perfect. I'm perfectly imperfect and that's perfect within my eyes. So. Today we're going over the Celtic deities um, and going over a couple of things with them. Now, the Celtic gods and goddesses are prevalent not just through Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, but also through Western and Southern Europe. <sighs> Records show that they can be found in Ireland, England, France, Northern Italy. Although there are 300 Celtic deities, 300. I ain't going over all of them today. Um, most of them are like local minor gods. So they're specifically towards a region. Um, but most modern witches work with the primary gods. And they are known throughout most Celtic lands. Now legend dates that Ireland was settled by a series of invaders. The first were the... Talfa di Dana. I'm pretty sure I named that. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. Um, the people of the goddess Donna. Um, they fed following invasions and then returned to conquer again. They were finally defeated by the Malaysians and then intermarried with them. The majority of Celtic deities descended from the Talfa di Dana. Now I'm saying this really. I'm, I'm, my, I'm warning you guys ahead of time, my pronunciation of the Celtic, of the Celtic gods are really, 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 really bad. Um, I do highly recommend looking it up correctly. You just have to understand that I'm Spanish and Italian. So I'm going to be taking it, like a friend of mine said when I was trying, um, trying to learn Spanish, is that I have an Italian accent and you don't want to do anything. My bad. Um... And also some things that y'all want to keep in your head is um, they're triple goddesses throughout the Celtic lore. And you will see that as I point it out to you um, because we're going to discuss a couple of them. Now the first one we're going to talk about is Bridget. Now Bridget is probably the most prominent in the Celtic deities today. In ancient times, she was worshipped throughout the Celtic lands, even after being conquered by the Romans and Christianity coming into play. Um, she was known as Saint Bridget. Um, 
in the Christian lore. And even in Kildar, there's been a fire burning her for centuries in honor of her. She is one of the triple goddesses and the aspect of Bridget that's considered, they're considered to be sisters. The first sister, the patroness of culture, fertility, and healing. The second is the patroness of poetry and inspiration and divination. And then the third, and then of bardic lore. Then the third is of fire and smithcraft. Now, Bridget is known for fire, poetry, healing, childbirth, unity, sun. It is said that anytime she walks, she leaves a trail of flowers and share marks behind her. No cat. And <clears throat> she is the daughter of Dragma. And um, she gives the world knowledge, inspiration, enlightenment, for vitality. And she is celebrated on Imbol. Now, Imbol is one of the holy witch holidays. And it's celebrated in the beginning of February. So, it's February 2nd that begins that festival. So, that's one of the major gods that come into play. Another one that you want to keep in mind is Ane. Ane is the goddess of fertility, agriculture, and sovereignty. Um, a funny story about her is Alan Alhulam raped Ane, but he lost an ear during the situation. And also he was rendered unfit to rule. So she's nominated someone in his place. In Limerick, the region of Limerick, she is known as Queen of the Fairies and the Midnight and the Midsummer Night Feast is for her. Um, another one is Med, M-E-D-B, Goddess of War of Fertility. She made suitors fight to the death for her hand. Um, she favors sex and alcohol. Her name loosely translates into intoxication. Just to let you know, when Shakespeare going in, um, in Shakespeare, when they talk about Queen Madge, you know, in your ear, when um, Mercurio was talking before they go into the Capulet Ball, this is the goddess that they're talking about. She, in other regions, she's considered a queen of the fairies. And she's, that's her, and she's found throughout literature as Queen Madge. So just to keep y'all ahead in mind. Now, one of the triple goddesses of the war goddess is Magdakatha, which loosely translates to battle crow. She is the goddess of war, enlightenment, and wisdom. She uses the tactic of fear and confusion um, to fuck with her enemies before a battle. She even, she even is known to appear the night before to install that fear and confusion for them to fuck up in battle. So that's something that I find very interesting. Um, Bran. Um, he, the legend, the cool legend about him is that he has a severed head um, from his body. He lost it during a fatal wound. Um, but he's still, he's still kicking. Um, but his head is known to be very, very powerful. Whoever possesses it possesses great prophecy and great fertility. Now, Lou is the god of light and skills. Some myths say that he came from across the sea, while others say he's the son of the Dragma. Now, the Dragma is one of the gods, of course, but we'll get to him in a second. And he is the keeper of the great spear and the god of many skills. He is the second of the great kings of Tutha Didana. Now, Tutha Didana, if y'all haven't figured it out yet, Tutha Didana is kind of like their kingdom. Okay. Um, so he's the second and he's, and he granted his men magical skill in battle. His primary festival is the, is the harvest celebration of Luenzda, which is Lu, or Lamas is what I call it, Lamas, and, um, which falls on August 1st. Now, 
Lou is also known, translated as the shining one. So sun, fertility, um, sun, vitality, writing, smith, poetry, craftsman. He is very accomplished among the gods. He is also um, very much associated with the sun. He is not of the sun. He is not the sun, but he's associated with the sun. So do that in mind. Um, now... Another god that I feel like should mention is Arwen. Arwen is the other world ruler. We don't really, he doesn't really appear in much mythology except for one when he um, has a battle. And it's, there's a lot of muddiness there, to be honest. Um, but I thought I would mention him. But we're going to get to the big god here in a second. So. Let's talk about Danyu. Danyu is the Earth Mother. A lot of people, a lot of historians believe that she is the representation of all mother goddesses across mythology and they all derive from her. Um, she's the goddess of wisdom, fertility, the wind. She is the ruler of the people of the goddess Danyu, which is also, that is the translation of the um, Tathudidana. Um, or Tahu Didan. I'm so bad at pronouncing this, but just to let y'all know. Um, and she is, she is considered to be the first goddess to rule. And it was named after her. Um, So moving on to the next, the next one, there is Manen Maclear, which is one of the earliest Celtic gods. Um, he's considered to be older than the Tathudidon. Um, he is the god of the sea, specifically around the island of Man in England. Um, uh, the island of Man, England, and he rules the weather. He's also associated with reincarnation. Um, he's the foster father of the god Lu. Um, now let's go into some of the big heavy hitters here that um, I want to talk about. Um, so the Dagna is considered the All Father. He's the father of all Irish gods and one of the three kings of Tathudidana. Um, his name usually translates into the good god he um the druids considered him to be the god of wisdom a sky god and an earth god he carries a club that was and possesses of culture and a perpetual nourishment he um is the fathers to the deities bridget ogma and agnes um ogma is the god of war he guides the dead, but also he has the power to bind men with his words. He is the father of the Celtic alphabet, also known as Ogmen. Now, Ogmen, if you... Ogmen is an alphabet, but it's mostly made of lines. And a lot of witches use the alphabet um, Ogmen, which is O-G-H-A-M. And it's actually really cool to use in your spell work. It, the letters of Ogden alphabet are, com are composed of short lines along with a central axis. Some witches inscribe each letter onto a stick and uses the sticks of demandation in similar way as runes. So this is kind of like the Celtic runes. And look it up. It's really cool. But what you do is you have a central lawn and then you do A, B, C. And it's actually, it's actually really neat to work with. Um, it's also incredibly different. So make sure you get your translations right. And believe me, there's translations all over the internet that you can find, honestly. Um, just type in O-G-H-A-M, alphabet. Um, now, 
it's not typically used for everyday communication, just to give you a heads up. <laughs> it's used for usually special occasions, like holidays and that kind of thing. Um, he's associated with the Gog Ogmios, O-G-M-I-O-S, um, who's the ghoulish god of eloquence and poetry. And I'm sorry, guys, I'm reading from my notebooks to, just to give you a heads up. So I have this one and I have another one. Um, and one of them is my book shadows. <laughs> so, bear with me. Um, so now let's go to Agnes. Now Agnes is the son of Dachma. He is the god of unrequited love. So if you've ever fell in love and never been loved back, I know this god. Um, <clears throat> he is also associated with the finer, with the funeral rites. Um, he's also a trickster god, so known for his wit and charm. I feel like he has been, he has not requited love versus he, people have not, re, not re, unrequited loved him. I feel like he's the one that buffed love versus people buffing his love. Um, now let's get to the two majors that I absolutely adore and love and are my heart and soul. Kronos is the horn god of ghoulish origin. He wears antlers of a stag and he is the god of fertility and animals. He is the guardian of the other world. He is associated with prosperity. He is also connected with the god Hearn, who is the god of hunting. Now, just to let you guys know, I know very well of Kronos and I'm not just telling of this world, but also in my LARP world. My first, my first LARP character ever, her name was Nell, and she was a worshiper and a follower of Kronos. And I will talk to you about that when I go into my LARPing. But she was my absolute, like, he is one of my favorite gods ever. Like, honestly, if I go into nature and I'm in woods, which I'm not in woods anytime soon because of desert, um, he is one of the major gods that I go to for meditation, go to for if I'm hunting or someone's hunting on my behalf. I pray and light a green candle for him. He is my, I have great honor for Kronos. And I actually have a, um, it seems like him and Hearn, they kind of cross identity. Some people think some people think that they're one. Some people think they're different. Me personally, I think they're one. They're just different names. Um, kind of like his middle and his first name, in my personal opinion. Um, but he is the god of hunting, he's the god of prosperity, the god of nature, god of animals. So he's also the god of the other world, which I have a great association with too, since I'm a Scorpio. So he definitely has a place in my heart and in my worship. Um, I actually have a statue of him on my on my main altar, which is where I actually work at and meditate at. So um, now let's talk about another god that I love, but she scares me half to death. Um, <laughs> she's called the Morgan. Our Morgan, she is the god of war and death. She is shape shifting. She is the goddess. She is one of the triple goddesses. The names of her other free access vary from different traditions. Different aspects are associated with crows, ravens, panic, and frenzy. As a triad, they are considered the world, the war and death goddesses, but also goddesses of fertility. A Celtic myth describes that Sowen, which is Halloween, um, night she made with the Dachma while straddling the banks of the river Unis and washing bloody corpses in the armor of those fated to die in the upcoming battle. Her sisters are by the Katha, which we just talked about, and New Moon, um, which is the war trio. <sighs> How do I describe the Morgan? She's one of the fiercest gods of all, of all mythology. She definitely has her hands dirty, but she's also a god that you want to be batting in your corner. Um, 
I wear a lot of Ravens. I wear a lot of which are associated with her and you'll see that and a lot of the times I do that I'm ordering multiple gods when I wear when I wear those things because Freya is associated with ravens Odin's associated with ravens the Morgan associated with ravens um she's definitely a god that I'm interested in working with um besides just honoring her but that's something me as a witch I'm going to have to build up to because she is absolutely incredible she's beautiful and she is definitely something but there's the breakdown of the Celtic gods um I heard I hit major and minors so um keep that in mind as you're going through as you're going through working with them, if of course you have any gods that stick out to you or something along those lines, start doing a little more research. There are a couple of books that I have on them. Of course, I have the Celtic Cyclopedia, Celtic Mythology, and another one, and the Sacred World of Gales. So I have a couple of books that I work with and also I have other books that are goddesses and heroes and then I have books that um goddesses and heroes and then I have um oh and then I have this book which is it is Celtic Lore Spell Track of the Dark Goddess which is evoking the Morgan um And I do encourage you guys, I encourage you guys highly, and y'all, one day I'll let y'all see my new bookcases, but I encourage y'all highly to read, to do your own research, to read, and to learn for yourself. That's how I learn. That's how I, anyone will learn anything. Like, literally, and there are different, so many different ways for you to get information now. There are YouTube videos. There is the internet. There watch your sources on the internet though there are books i mean there's so much that you can gather that i definitely recommend just going cruising on amazon it's super cheap there's such thing as thrift books which is super cheap books it's like a thrift site for books like i highly encourage y'all to dig your to dig your mind and to read because the only way you're going to get to know these gods is if you read them read their mythologies read their stories and that's why I encourage for any type for any kind of magic that you do that's how I learned a lot of my magic that's how I learned is that in practice if you ever cast your first spell guess what it's not going to be perfect if you ever do your first potion or make your first tea or something along those lines guess what it's not going to be perfect but you learned something. You know, Thomas Jefferson, he fell out a billion times before he perfected the light bulb. And Disney, he got declined by 99 banks before he found that one to invest in him and to make Disneyland and Disney World. So just a heads up, there's such thing as failure and you go for it. Really just as my first LARP, um, my first art mentor taught me, he said, just go face first. And that's what you do. Just go face first um, and learn as much as you can. Well, guys, I want to thank you so much for being with me on this beautiful day. Um, don't forget, I'll be dropping Maybon today and I will be dropping it today. I will. I will be dropping it today. Um, I'll be dropping it today and then I will go over um, and then tomorrow we're going to go over the Tuna Tonic, which is both the Germanic and Norse gods. <laughs> they go hand in hand. Um, I call it the Norse. Oh, and just a tidbit. The Norse never called themselves Vikings. Vikings didn't come around till late 1800s, early 1900s. They called themselves the Norsemen. Just a heads up. And we'll be going over there, gods tomorrow so thank you guys so much for spending time with me um i can't wait to see you guys tomorrow merry meet merry part merry meet again